Hi, and welcome to 3DMotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at just the very, very basic rendering setups for Maya. For this particular model, we've just got this creature in here. I have four different views. I have the top view, front view, side view, and perspective. So I can zoom around the model a little bit. All right. So what we first want to do, if we want, I mean, if we've got this set up, I've got some lights in the scene too, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that. If I just want to just see what it looks like, I can just click the render frame. So that's basically the model in Maya. Okay, you can see the size is a basic 640 by 480. Keeps it nice and simple. I can click to the side view, do a render. There you go. Top view, render. And front view, render. Okay, so there you go. Basic simple. This is the the little the little clapboard is what means you're going to render this particular frame. It's basically taking a snapshot of your particular viewport. But this little icon right here, the little clapboard that has these couple little icons next to it, that's our settings. That's what we want to then click on. This is where we can set up some different parameters for this. Okay, You'll come up with a common first, and you can change your file format. You know, your image format, you can change it to JPG, blah, blah, blah. I like to keep it as the Maya IFF. The IFF is, uh, what was it, Inter interchange file format, if I remember correctly. It basically means it's going to render your image out, and the black background will actually be parsed out of the image when you bring it into Photoshop. It's basically it's putting the, the model itself onto its own layer and you don't even have to deal with the background. So that actually comes in handy. So I tend to use the Maya IFF. I just leave it alone. I don't change anything. Again, this is just a very quick introduction if we're looking to do some renders. If you scroll down, you have image size. You have some certain presets. Now, right, again, it's the 640 by 480. We can maintain height and width ratio by just clicking that little box. We can change a default. I mean, if we want to do this as, you know, a thousand, Hit enter you can see that the it changed around our uh, what would be basically a safe frame if you go to the camera settings it's in in max is, uh, Maya is called resolution gate that's this area around here that's what's going to be rendered so if I do a quick render see how I cut that off anything outside of that frame got cut so we don't want that I'm gonna type in 640 and it'll go back there you go, back to the way it was. But again, you can maintain the width and height ratio. You can also click this little arrow, and there's a bunch of different choices as to what you might be looking to do. You know, some letter size, legal, blah, blah, blah. You can do the 1K square. That means 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Let's go ahead and click that real quick. Okay, and do a very quick render. And there it is. It's it's so big I can't even get it all on the screen. So it gave me a thousand by thousand pixel image. Again, that's that's a little bit big. It's 1024 basically. So the 2K is 2048, 3K is 3072, and the 4K will be 4096. There you go. So it gives you some standards. But again, you can always change this. You can do the 800 by 600, for instance. You can change your pixels to images or inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, and picas. The resolution, again, this is just like taking a photograph or printing. You know, how many dots per inch do you want? 72 DPI dots per inch is the basic standard one. If you're doing something like shots of this creature for, say, your particular portfolio, you may want to change that up to say, I actually like to use 300 takes a little sometimes a little longer to render depending on how you do it but you get higher resolution as a result of that let's just do a quick render on that there you go it's it's negligible it didn't kill that bad and it's actually you actually get more resolution I find 
We're in our perspective camera, so obviously that's the one that's going to be selected. If we go to our Maya software, we can change the quality of the actual shot. Right now it was the preview quality, it was very low. The anti-aliasing was low and the quality itself was pretty low. We can do production quality and then the anti-aliasing changes automatically to the highest quality. Let's do a quick render on that. And see, it took a little bit longer to get that out, but it's crisper, it's clearer. So, you know, if you, if you want to just do some quickie renders, the preview quality is the easiest one, gets it across, gets, gets your shading across, what have you. But obviously, if you want to do something for print or something that's going to look good, you do want to make sure you switch that to a production quality standard, okay? Which will automatically, of course, swap this out to the highest quality. The rest, I tend not to really mess with because there's so many different parameters, so many different things you can do with rendering. It, it can really actually be very, very mind-boggling. It can actually be very um, intimidating. So I try to keep it nice and simple. Most of the shots I do anyway are for portfolio pieces um, or sometimes for some character lighting, you know, to see what the, the model might look like in game and do some nice shots of that for advertising and marketing and things like that. So for something like this, I think I'd keep everything that I've got right now. I'll just minimize that. And then basically I would just render. Okay, so here's our shot. I would click on File, Save Image, and we'll just call this test one and we're going to keep the Maya IFF going to the, that's that interchange file format I'm going to save it All right just you know, nice and simple there's our next shot I'm going to file save image we'll call this test 2 oops test 2 so you can basically see what I'm doing with this and there are faster ways than to actually do this. I'm doing this the very simple. If you don't, you've never done this, it's just easier to just click a couple of buttons instead of just going for for rendering a batch, etc. Keeping this simple, simple, simple. If you've never done this, this is what you want to do. And then the last image is our front image. We're just going to go ahead and do a quick render on that. File, save image, call that test four. Okay, so in Photoshop, I've just got a black background. Let's go ahead and open. I'm going to scale down. We've got the IFF, all, th all four of them. Just grab all of them all. The nice thing is, is I can now just grab Control A, Control X. I can just cut it. I can paste it right into my view. Control A, Control X. I can put this like, well, let's put this down over here. I might need to create more space, but we can play around with the sizes in a second. Control A, Control X to cut again. Oh, there we go. And then Control A, Control X. And then move that down. So there you go, kind of pretty pretty quick, pretty simple way to, to get some really nice shots of your model in. Uh, very simple rendering aspects in Maya, keeping it nice and, and we're not going to get over complicated because, again, l there's literally tons of things you can do for rendering, but if you've never done any rendering in Maya, this was the quick way to go to get what you want, to get images you can use, especially for your portfolio. It's ready to go. It makes it nice and simple. I hope you've enjoyed this. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks very much for watching.